Usually, throughout the church year, you may have noticed, if, especially if you've come to daily Mass here or there, typically the way that the church calendar works is that once or twice a week, maybe more, we, as a church, hold up on a certain day a specific saint, or maybe two of them. Sometimes the saints seem to occur in pairs. So we usually either hold up a saint or two saints on a day, and we kind of make everything about the Mass geared towards them. If they were a martyr, we wear red. If they were a virgin, we wear white. So on and so forth. And we kind of honor them. And some of the more well-known saints, we even do extra in order to celebrate their feast days as well. But what we do is we hone in on individual saints and we take that opportunity that day to think about what that saint or that pair of saints is trying to teach us and inspire us to do today. Perhaps it's St. Augustine. On the feast of St. Augustine, we may pause and think about his life the fact that in his early and young adult years he fathered a child outside of marriage and ran around and was very rich and, and gambled and lost most of that money away and just lived a very crazy life and then experienced a very profound conversion and went on to become one of the great teaching bishops in the history of the church. Perhaps we look at St. Paul and his conversion experience. Perhaps we look at a, young, a younger person, St. Maria Goretti. Perhaps we look at St. Francis, who, quite to the opposite of St. Augustine, lived a very simple life and gave away everything that he had in simplicity. Throughout the year, we as Catholics are reminded or given opportunities to recall specific saints. But today is different. Today, we do not look at a specific saint. We look at all of them. The big mass, the uncountable number of saints. As St. John says in today's first reading from the book of Revelation, I like the word that he uses, the multitude. The multitude. An uncountable number of a number of people stretching as far as the eye can see. That today is what we take a moment to think about. And what I want to talk about or reflect on a bit is why do we do that? Why do we take a day to think about and reflect on the massive, uncountable multitude of saints who have come before us? Perhaps you've been to the Indianapolis Museum of Art or some other art museum. And oftentimes, when we go to an art museum, we look at specific paintings. We take them in, we stand before them, we find those that we like especially in a special way, while not, think, you know, while not disregarding the others, but we, we find ones that we perhaps like and we kind of focus on them, much as we do often with individual saints. But sometimes when we're walking through an art museum, we may perhaps be struck by the occasion or the, the realization that this is full of art. This, this, this place is full of art. And this is just one art museum in one city, in one country, in the world. Perhaps it's good for us at times to be washed over by the realization of how much beauty there has been through all the different civilizations, through all the different cultures that have come before us. It's good for us sometimes to step back from individual paintings and have that realization. And I think in a very real way and in a very similar way to that, it's also good for us to sometimes step back and simply observe the fact that there is an uncountable multitude of saints who have gone before us. I'd like to bring in here a parable. I'm not real big in terms of parables or fables, but this was from a book that my grandfather gave me, and I think that it is very much 
uh, appropriate for tonight. The, the fable that, is in, that was in this book talks about a group of geese, and they live in a barnyard with the cows, the sheep, the chickens. They live in the mud and the hay and the dirt. And one day, the geese in the barnyard see a flock of their brother and sister geese flying south above them. And they all turn to each other in the barnyard and they talk about, wow, I wish I could do that. I wish I could fly. And a couple of the geese who are flying above see some of their brothers and sisters down in the barnyard and they come down to the barnyard. And they say, do you know that you can fly too? Do you know that you can join us? And many of the geese ignore the message and continue to walk around, but a few of them take flight and join those flying with them in the sky. Like those geese, I think sometimes if we look up and we just see one bird flying or one special human person, it's easy to write them off. It's easy to write them off as crazy or way too pious or whatever way we can, it's easy to dismiss one or two people. But when we look up and we see the sky full, when we see a multitude, an uncountable multitude of people who have come before us living the life of a saint, it reminds us that we are called to that in an inescapable way. It's a lot easier or it's a lot harder to run from that reality. When we look up and we see the uncountable multitude of saints, we are reminded that that is our calling too. That we are called to join the saints and to be saints and to fly. Sometimes people say, uncountable multitude of saints. What about the fact that, you know, this whole process with becoming a saint in the Catholic Church is really weird. You have to apply, you have to have a bunch of paperwork submitted on your behalf, you have, to be beatif you have to work miracles, then you have to be beatified, then you have to work more miracles, then you have to be canonized. What about my godson? What about my mother? Are you saying that they're not saints? And I think it's important to realize that the church, while naming a very small percentage of the saints, understands and believes and teaches that there, are, that there are a countless multitude that go unnamed, but nonetheless are saints and are enjoying life in heaven as we speak. It's important to realize that, that those that the church has held up, she's only done that simply to provide us with some specific examples for reflection, but that there are in fact many countless others who are also saints as well. The question we have to ask ourselves is, do we believe that we are called to be a saint? Do we believe that we can fly too? Let us tonight be convinced that we are meant to be saints. Jesus gives us the game plan in today's gospel for how to become a saint. He gives us the Beatitudes. And in a special way, I think, the one that jumped out at me this evening, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hunger and thirst. We may stand in the barnyard and look up and think that righteousness might be nice. Do we hunger and thirst for it? Let us spread our wings as people of God, let us become saints, let us be holy, and let us no longer be content with the allures of the barnyard.